Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Crochet Spread Your Wing Shawl. This is a two piece unit. One side is one unit, the other side is another and then it's sewn down through the back. Today I'm gonna show you how one of these wings are actually formed. Once you understand how it's formed then you can just finish it up on your own. So it's recommending Karen and Pantone. Let's talk about that next. So the yarn of recommendation is Karen and Pantone and it has the versions that you see. Now one version the right and the left side match each other and the other version they're opposite and if you look at her outfit you can see that you can have something really kind of fun. So you could be very playful with your Karen and Pantone. Each one of these you just uh, take it apart. It needs a total of five balls all together a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook in order to play. Today I'm gonna get you started and then you're gonna whip stitch the back on your own and then once you understand how this grows I think that you'll be off to the races. Let's take a quick look at a diagram that I made and uh, hopefully it'll make sense for you because I think you'll need a couple stitch markers today. So like always I have to do my homework so that I understand the pattern. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start off in the middle and we're gonna rotate around the chain and then back. So we're going in a, uh, just like a horseshoe shape when we're going to do this. There is a total of three rows per color that you'll find in here. When we go to switch the color we're gonna be doing some back looping in order to have the colors really kinda line up properly. So when I turn it over here you can see that I've done that here. So what I decided to do is that I needed to figure out how I'm doing the edge here. So when I was looking and reading the pattern I was a little bit confused and that's not because the pattern is hard. Is that I was getting confused on where exactly the corner is. So I'm gonna be recommending to you that you have some stitch markers so that you can keep an eye on your corner. So when you go to progress around you'll see it each and every time. It's not just a typical corner. It's got something a little bit fun in there so that you can really line it up properly. So what's gonna happen is that when we go to start up our next color when we have that you see here in the pink we're gonna start up and we're gonna chain and then work our way back and then go around and then stop a little early and then just start. So it's a really neat idea and I think this pattern is really quite awesome and let's grab our six and a half millimeter your Karen and Pantone and let's begin and I'll show you how to get started and then I'll leave the rest for you today. So as we begin today I'm going to be starting off with the right side wing. Now the left side is exactly identical. The only difference is when I say back loop and you're working on the right side you need to do the front loop. So just make sure that you're conscious of that because then it'll keep the design looking even on both sides. So let's begin. Create a slip knot and we're going to chain 42. This is an easy level project and it really truly is. So let's just chain 42. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go all the way to 42 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. So once you have your 42 on here we're gonna go fourth chain from the hook and let's just count it back. So 1, 2, 3 and get to the fourth and get to the back hump of the chain uh, and I want you to double crochet into that one. So I want you to double crochet into each one of the back humps of the chain and when I'm going to do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meet you at the end of this chain and the last chain we have to do something fun because we have to rotate around the bottom of this chain. So please make sure you go in the back hump of the chain so that you have the most perfect looking uh, starting that you possibly can. So I'll see you at the end of this chain. So I'm coming up close to the end of the chain and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna stop on the last a uh, second last one and I'm going to show you my diagram on so that you can turn it around. I want you to grab two stitch markers just two spare pieces of yarn. Put those aside and let's look at the diagram. So in the diagram what's gonna happen is that we are gonna go into our last stitch. So we're coming along here and in the last one we're gonna put a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. So you're gonna have all of that into your final chain. What I want you to do is that on the second one I want you to put a stitch marker and on this one here I want you to put a stitch marker. This is your corner moving into the forward. So every time then after we get beyond this is the middle one of the grouping of three next time will always be your middles as you're going and so it's easier to look at that because you're gonna be playing in the chain one spaces in the future so it's always, it can, you can get confused. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna rotate around and I'm gonna apply my stitch markers in and then we're gonna come. Now you notice that I didn't go all the way back. It's not cause I'm lazy but the last six stitches get untouched. So we don't touch the last six stitches when we're coming back around on this one. So let's uh, begin to do this next. You ready to go? The last loop. So what we want to do, the last chain here, we're gonna double crochet, chain one and then we're gonna double crochet, 
okay? And then what I want you to just, just pull up a loop and just pull that stitch marker and that is your first corner. It's easier to do it now than it is to get confused. And now you're gonna chain one and you're gonna double crochet in again and then chain one and double crochet in again and that is your next corner right there. So pull up a loop and pull in right underneath that one. This is your next corner. And then chain one and then double crochet all into that first one. So now we know exactly where the corners are the next time we're passing through here. So we're gonna immediately then just jump to the next one. Okay, so do you see that's all part of it? So just jump to the next one. Lay down the straggler on top. Trap that underneath so that it's completely out of view and get that in there and you're going to double crochet everything except for the final six that includes the turning chain. So you're gonna stop and leave six untouched. So just continue to double crochet and leave six untouched. I'll see you there in a moment. So I'm coming to the other side. So I wanna leave the last six stitches empty. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That includes the turning chain. You're gonna turn your work and now this is considered one row of three. So every color has three rows. So now when we turn, we're immediately going to just double crochet up. So one, two, three. That counts as your first double crochet and coming into the next one and you wanna double crochet yourself all the way to the corner. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna meet you at the first corner and then we'll turn it around and I'll show you how to move your stitch markers up and so that you can keep in count. So I'll see you at the corner next. So as we get close to our corner, what's gonna happen is we're coming along and we're just under here now and we're coming across. So you had the chain one space, so you're gonna be filling it in with the double crochet and then the next one here that has been marked with your stitch marker is each gonna get a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then the next chain one you're filling it in. So you're filling in all these spots here and then you're just paying attention to the corners more than anything to make sure that they're gonna fill in. Because you're adding an extra stitches this will grow equally on all sides. So I'm just going into each stitch as I'm hitting my corner. So we know that there's a chain one space that is just before that stitch marker. See I put the stitch marker in there so I can physically see and pay attention that there is a chain one space. So fill that chain one space in with the double crochet first and then that's the corner. So the corner will be one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet again, chain one and one double crochet again all into the same spot. Before you move on the middle one of that grouping of three is your new corner. So just insert the hook in and pull that stitch marker through so that you can physically see it again next time. So remember that there's a chain one space just after so that you're gonna fill that in and now it's a double crochet that you're filling it in and now a chain one space and that's just before this corner. So your corner again just going in double crochet, chain one, double crochet again, chain one, double crochet again and then move that stitch marker up to the middle one of the grouping of three. And therefore you'll see it next time. So remember that there's a chain one space just after it so fill that in and then begin your double crochets all the way to the end of the row. So you don't stop early at this time. So go all the way to the end and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm just coming to the other side and going all the way to the end. That includes the turning chain. You can see that the other side it's stepped early. And so this is gonna be the second pass of three that you'll do for each one of the colors. Okay, so I'm not all the way done. I gotta do the turning chain for uh, last. So now you're gonna turn your work and do your final pass going across. So you're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and then you're gonna do a double crochet then one into each all the way to the first corner. 
So I'll meet you at the corner again. Just verify you know what you're doing and then uh, I'll show you how to finish this uh, row off and then we're gonna begin the next layer of wings and that'll be the repeat on how you're gonna do the remaining of your shawl. You can make this as big as you want to and uh, just pay attention what is your right side and your left side when you're making these so that you can get your back loops or your front loops done properly and we'll talk about that in more detail later. So continue to the corner. So I'm coming up close to the corner. I'm looking for my stitch markers which I see right here and I'm going into each one of the crochets and then remember just before the stitch marker is a chain one space so you're gonna fill that in and then the stitch marker is the corner. So the corner is always gonna be the same now. It's gonna be double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then move that stitch marker up to the middle one of that three that you just did. So these corners are gonna get further apart from each other the more you grow it out. So you'll notice that happening. Okay, so move that up. Now remember on the other side of the corner there is a chain one space that you need to fill in. Okay, and then fill in each one of the double crochets up into the next corner and remember that there's a chain one just before the corner. So I found the stitch markers to be quite handy just to be able to indicate to me where, where I need to be looking. It can be, it's nice and tight so it, it can get confusing. So chain one is going to fill that in and then your corner is next. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then move up your stitch marker. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna continue then down this side and this is the it for this particular color and then we're gonna be switching off our colors but where we start is unique. It's not at the end of this row. So just don't forget to fill in that last chain one space and then just double crochet right to the end. I'll see you there in a moment and then we'll talk about where we need to start next because we're not starting at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of this row. This is the third row and you're gonna go right into the turning chain and then that's it. So what I need you to do is that you're gonna fasten this off now. This is it for this color and we're gonna introduce a new color and what I want you to do is just nicely weave in your ends and uh, with the tapestry needle just go back and forth and just to trap it underneath all the stitch work. So we're going to start in a unique place. We're not gonna start here. We're going to turn this around and start, watch what I do. So here's, no, see where it's pointing out? I want you to turn it upside down. So where you had just started the last row, I want you to start here and then you're gonna build out and then go around and then you're gonna come around and stop six uh, stitches. So right where we finished off was down here. So we're just gonna come back to that last row where we started and then start back up there. So let's begin your next color. Okay, so let's get ready for our next color. So we're gonna come to the top of the first chain three. We ended down here so we came back to where we had started and you're going to just join it with the slip stitch. And now you're gonna chain a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and what you're doing is you're building it out. So you're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three and get the back um, uh, loop of the stitch or the back hump and it's telling you to actually do that so that you have a finished look. So you're gonna just work your way on the back loops of your chain until you get back right onto the project itself. Okay, and it says that there's four in a row which is correct. So now, the first one that you did attaching to, you're going to go into that one and now the rest of them because this is the right side of the wing, you're gonna go into the back loop. So let me just show you what that is. If you're new to crochet, there's always two strands. If you go into the first strand, that's the front loop and if you go into the other one, that's furthest away from you, it's the back loop. So because this is the right side, I want you just to bury in that going into the back loop. So if you were doing the left side, you'd go into the front loop. Okay, so just pay attention to that. And you're only doing it for this particular uh, row so that it has a visual difference of the way that the colors are working together. So just now work your way all the way down to the corner. The corners are exactly what you already know and I'll meet you there anyway. 
make sure that you're on track. Now I'm coming closer to the corner and it's exactly what you already know. So it's already been marked with the stitch marker. So you know that you have a chain one space just before it. So you're just gonna fill those in. So because you're working in the back loop on the first pass is that you can't do that on a chain one space. So you're just gonna go right into the space itself. Okay, so here's the space. So go right into the space and put one single crochet. Now here's your corner to so treat it the same. So just going into the stitch and just double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And then move that stitch marker up to the middle one of the grouping of three. So that you find it next time. Now you're just gonna work your way across to the next corner. So remember there's a chain one space first and then you're going into each one of the double crochets until you hit the next corner. So the corners are getting further apart from each other and this um, is what makes these wings amazing. So I just started off wrong. So you can see that I just did. So the last three should go into the back loop only. So just stay in the back loop once you uh, get beyond a corner. I should technically take this out of the video but um, it's good to show you that just in case you do it yourself because I did it during prototype checking as well. So we're gonna work our way in the back loop only to the next corner. So because this is the first pass of the new a uh, new color, we're not going all the way across to the other side. We're gonna stop early as well to create another stepping action in the wings. So the next one is the chain one space. So go right into the space and then into your corner. So the corner is the same, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then go right into the middle one and bring that stitch marker forward. If you're gonna start identifying your stitches at any time, you don't need to move stitch markers, but for me it's just easier. So, so we just turn the corner, so we're gonna go into the chain one space. Continue to go on the back loop only, then as you work your way then to the other side. So you wanna stop early, you wanna stop six stitches uh, undone or don't uh, do the final six stitches and then you're gonna turn from that point. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So you're coming to the other side of the row and you wanna stop six stitches early. Let's see where we are. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got one more to go. So the first time and the new color you're gonna stop early and then the other three rows you keep going back and forth right to the ends. So because this is uh, now established you're just gonna chain three and you're just gonna go across again just one double crochet in each. There's no back looping anymore. Uh, if you're doing the left side um, there's no front looping either. So you're just gonna go back and forth now three times. Don't forget to handle your corners just like I showed you before and then that's it. So what you can just do is that you can do the number of um, color repeats that it's asking you. You can go as big as you need to go. I think pretty much in this one um, and it's pretty awesome and I think that you can have a really nice idea and a design. Once you're done with that then you're gonna take both wings and then you're just gonna whip stitch. We have videos for whip stitching. You're gonna whip stitch both of the wings together and therefore they'll come together right at the back of seam and uh, I think that you can have a good time with that. So you can see that there's two different versions. One matches each other. The other one's just kind of fun and you can play with different designs just like you see here. So this is the crochet spread your wing shawl. I think it's a really awesome pattern and I think it's really quite easy to understand and it's a project that you could probably do on the go without much problems. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you.